Oh, what's going on, everybody? Whoa. In stereo. I'm your host, Christian Piles. Welcome to episode 833 of Flow Wrestling Radio Live. I'm joined today by JD Raider and Ben Funky Askren. These guys, oh, they, they, they had their whole little bit, what was that, last week about, oh, I was late, which was obviously a lie. And these guys, just the skin of their teeth make it on time. Ben logs on at 8.14. What I hear is eight, these late. two were on time. Minutes. I was late last week. No. That's what I you heard. You know what? Late. On the calendar minutes. invite, on the calendar invite, it says 8 o'clock. So technically, you were both late. And uh, that's I mean, that's a demerit for pull, each of pull you. Pull the listeners. Pull the listeners. It was that it, You are getting a demerit. Three demerits. Listen, you were late by 14 minutes. You don't got to start like trying to nitpick us. Listen, ridiculous. Ridiculous. Hey, okay. Are you gonna make it to Michigan today? Because I thought I thought that uh the power went out at the Austin Airport yesterday. It did. I restored it. We have power in the Austin Bergstrom International Airport. It's gonna be fine. The boys leaving yesterday had to deal with a little bit. Um, but it's uh it's happening. We had people going to who's number one and worlds yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Some people are doing double uh Spay and um Tyler, new guy Tyler. Are going straight from who's number one to Serbia, so that's gonna be fun. Really? But yeah, inexplicably the uh, the airport lost lost power. And you know what? I booked the I uh, you know my travel patterns. I always take the first flight out, but I decided because I I love you and I love doing this show. It's like you know what? I'll back it up. I'll have an 11:30 flight so we can get this Thursday FRL off the week before World starts. And we got a little. We didn't talk about it yet. I think I just forgot to, but. We have a change on our Greco World team with yeah. Theoki. What's up with this? <laughs> I, I asked. They literally would not tell me anything. We have an idea, but I'm not gonna um, okay. put, put it out there. Got but it. Jesse Theoki and Ben Provisor out off the team. Wait, uh, both of them? Se- deuces. Ben Provisor and Sammy Jones, or excuse me, Sammy Jones and Spencer Woods are replacing those two. Dang, and that, what the heck? That's all we get to know. But. So three, Bro, okay, let three me ask changes. You, I, gotta, I gotta ask you a question. I gotta ask you a question. Okay. Has the men's freestyle world team ever had three changes after the team has been set? I don't think so, man. They, I mean, not since I've been following that I can recall. Three. Uh, this is three on one team. Three on one team. It's almost thirty-three <laughs> percent. I'll check into that. It is close. Wow. Uh, yeah, basically a third of the team swapped like this is this change was announced basically a week before world started uh for them because i would i think sammy wrestles plus, plus a coach se- september 11th what'd you say plus a coach i forgot about um, yes yeah, every coach. yeah final x new york was the end of a lot of Gre- greco <laughs> Some, for, time Dude, of real transition that's very strange um so strange strange times for for us greco but um so anyway, that starts soon, so I w- we wouldn't be able to talk about it. Uh, this is our last chance to bring you abreast of that. We don't know what's up with it. Jeff Baxter will look into it, um, but um, yeah. Okay, Jeff Baxter, look into it for us. Yeah, Jeff. Maybe Jeff is Dang, asking us two Wisconsinites right there. Oh jeez. Oh jeez. Oh what the Too heck there? Maybe you know they, they, maybe they, they got love the Greco, heavy. but they 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 do everything. They make the team, and then. Next thing you know, it they're off. But they did get a Wisconsin Badger on the team because uh, the other dude, he got out of there. Hancock, so Amos is on the team. Yes, yes, indeed. Wow. Uh, so, made it happen. Okay. I think he was on the same flight plan as Seth Gross. He had oh, some really? To uh, get into Serbia. Yeah. Well, they were they are actually going to Ramstein, the Air Force Base first. That's Rammstein. often that's where they often acclimate, and then. In Germany, and then they go to wherever they're going, and now that's what they're. I think some of them, and then they they end up heading over to Serbia and like kind of stages based on when they're going to compete. So I think some of them are still in Germany uh, on the men's freestyle side because they don't compete for over a week or approximately a week. We have very exciting uh, week coming up for wrestling because we have who's number one tomorrow. I'm leaving this morning right after the show to head there. We've got women's card starts at 4 Eastern, men at 7 Eastern, live uh, live on flow, of course. Very excited for this card. Um, 
It's my first time. I did not go to who's number one last year. Back this year. Very, very exciting stuff. Um, ben, what are some – I know Bray was on, and you talked about things a little more extensively, so we won't get so into it. Yeah, but, you uh, you missed the show that day. Jeez, can't believe you. Well, yeah, sorry. Um, I never um, I, mean, I, I never want to. We, we talked about was that the matches that I want to see the most are the ones that are not happening. Oh, well, thanks, Ben. Um, <laughs> well, it's unfortunate. We got the big, big boys, the two twenties. Um, and really you could kind of mix that up a few ways. Cause you've got Hopke, uh, who won a world medal. You got Keeter who won a world medal. And then you have Christian Carroll, um, one, two, and three. I mean, I think we could do a little round, round robin there. Let's have some fun. I, I love having fun. Um, but yeah, they're, they're not doing it. Um, Okay, yeah. is that it? Can can are there any it. matches you the, are the excited the about? Show, the show is actually over now. All right, <laughs> that's it. No, the other thing I actually complained about—I don't know if you watch the show—is um, so I got a lot of complaints here, Christian. And then we can talk about the matches. The other one that I complained about that I didn't really like uh, of the president it set is there's two of these dudes, Mark Anthony McGowan and Angela Froy, who have not competed since last February, and we, you know, for me. Um, man, I hate the letting the dude hold on to the number one spot when they have a good not, and not because of injury. If they got torn ACL and they're out, whatever, right? But just on their own choosing to not compete for say a seven month window, um, that's hard for me because all these other dudes they're out in the streets, they're trying to make cadet and junior world teams, they're at Fargo, junior duels, they're at all these places. Um, and so, like, you know, if you get ranked that high and then you just start. Uh, I don't want it's not ducking because I don't think that's what they're doing, but just choosing to sit out mm -hmm. for whatever reason. I don't think you should be able to maintain your number one spot. I'm I'm team streets. Um, team but, streets. There we go. We love Let's the go. streets. We love the streets. We were born in the streets. Yeah. In the streets. Who knows the streets more than us three? But however, to play contrarian, that almost makes me more excited for these matches because for whatever reason they chose to sit out. They didn't prioritize Fargo or making a freestyle world team. So it's like, have they, where are they at? Yeah. We haven't True. we haven't gotten to see them for however many months that is, half a year. Which yeah. in high school terms, it's like, all right, so they peaked for a normal postseason. It is a lot because most guys compete. But if you think about it in terms of like a college season, it's like, you you peak for your postseason, yeah, which they did, and now it's the beginning of the wrestling season. Yeah, that's it's really not a crazy amount of time. No, it's not. I think we're just used to this new sort of phase in wrestling, high school wrestling, where man, the the pinnacles are making cadet world teams and and possibly Fargo. Yeah, but you know that's not that's not the end all be all every year for every guy, and um, I think you can't just write them off completely and i'm not i'm not writing them off it's not what i'm doing at all well you can't disinvite them because they didn't disinvite. they didn't do well, freestyle it's, okay so okay let me ask you this then how long would you let someone sit on a number one spot while not competing while everyone else below them is in there mixing it up how long do you let them sit on it it's been six months and i and i i, I absolutely see the argument for leaving them there because they they have earned it through previous wins but at some point, you have to say, we haven't seen these dudes in long enough, right? And not, none of their wrestling. So we're going to see them again. We're probably going to see them in Super 32, I would think. So it's yeah. fine. But like, how long would we actually let someone sit on number one spot before we say, ah, we're going to have to pull you, maybe pull off the list completely if they don't compete or or move them down because they're just we don't know what their status is. If it's up to me, it's the big early season tournaments. Your Super 32 your maybe Powerade, you know, if their school goes to a Powerade, but they don't, then it's yeah. like something it's, is. I sure. mean, if they go February um, to November and haven't wrestled, they should, yeah, yeah, they should okay. lose their spot. Cool. But they should probably come yeah. out entirely because, like, what are you yeah, dropping? What are, what are you dropping them down based on? Like that. That was. That's always the thing. It's like, okay, we know this kid is a high school wrestler. Okay, so to for him to be a high school wrestler, he should be ranked. Now, do you put him six just because of inactivity? Well, that's weird because then you got five guys in front of him that maybe don't have the – haven't really proven it. So it's disingenuous either way. Um, yes. But, yeah, high school rankings are, are, are very tricky in Fair. this way too. 
Um, it's okay. not like NCAA. Uh, well, once oh, we get past those things, my favorite matches, uh, Anthony Knox and Christian Castillo, uh, Ben DeVino and Mark Anthony McGowan, and Meyer Shapiro and Ladarian Lockett. Those are your favorites. Why, why Shapiro Lockett? Uh, cause I don't really know what's going to happen. I mean, I think I, I would lean very heavily towards Shapiro, but I think Glockett has some really good tools. Um, and maybe he surprises him. Maybe he does something that we don't really expect. Who would you say is the biggest favorite, um, of the, on this card? Favorite. Maybe Ryder Block. He's mm, that's two, and oh, two and wow. against Bailey, I think in their mm -hmm. rivalry. He beat him at junior duels this year and junior duels last year, to my knowledge. That is the only two oh, times. Did he beat him at Fargo this year too? Or no? May maybe he is three and zero against okay. him. That's a, that's a good one. Uh, the other thing I was thinking, Kasich Mantanona. Mantanona really took some strange losses. That was another one we talked about. Um, that's just the Mant Man effect. Though. Yeah, he just he just does what he what you know. <laughs> he's just very unpredictable. Um, yeah, I mean, it is a non-tournament format and only one way in, so that probably is beneficial for him, I would guess, just seeming the way he wrestles. But I think I think it's Knox. Yeah. I think Knox that is the biggest. My second. I think he's the biggest favorite. Because he's so much – so do you think he's bigger than Castillo? Because we were talking about this, and they said he might be a little bigger, but I feel like Castillo just wrestled 105, and Knox wrestled 120 at Fargo. Yeah, he's going to be bigger. He's going to be bigger, and I think he's, he's... – They're going to weigh the same, but – one guy's going to be pulling for but a moment in time. Yes, um, correct. Yeah, I, I I think that's probably the one for me. Um, I'm curious for your uh, your 160 thoughts, Ben. This four man because you got some bias. Um, <laughs> true, true. You're biased because Braden Scholes is in there, but we've got Angelo Ferrari versus Braden first, Nico Ruiz versus Joe Seeley. I think conventional thought, even though he's ranked third, is that. Sealy may be on paper the favorite right now. That's Would kind you... of what I was thinking last week because I've, I've been really impressed with Sealy. He did wrestle a couple of our guys this spring. I thought he was really good. But then uh, it was brought to me that Ruiz beat him twice last offseason or la uh, just before last year, maybe like no, last November. Yes. So I know that was a while ago. And I know maybe Sealy got better, but Sealy was, uh, I mean, I, the, the, one of their matches was in Super 32 finals. So like, you know, he was still performing at a really high level even when he lost to him. So, yeah, he probably still got better, but, um, you know, Ruiz has beat him two in a row. That's a thing. Yes, yeah. Uh, I'm, at the four man's really exciting to me. Um, we can talk more about uh, – I don't know. I think I teased yesterday we were going to have a, a special guest. And I mentioned on Tuesday's show um, about an ADCC competitor named Keith Krikorian, a jiu-jitsu guy who listens to – Every FRL, he claims. Uh, nice. Which is awesome. And so I said, hey, you know what? We should have Keith on because, one, he's a wrestling fan, which is awesome. And, two, ADCC next week. You may want to know a little something about it, even if you're not a jiu-jitsu fan. I think there's some crossover appeal. So, first, we have a quick little video kind of introing Keith, and then we're going to bring Keith on. Um, so, go. check this out. This video is actually really sick. This fighter is the number one seed. He has secured a silver medal at three ADCC trials, representing Pet Planet. Please welcome Pete Krikorian. We have him. He's on. You saw him just heel hook Josh Cisneros. Keith Kerkorian, what's up, man? Good morning. You're in California. It's quite early for you. Yeah, a little early, but uh, what's up, guys? I appreciate you having me on. 
Well, appreciate you coming on, Keith. Um, first of all, um, I, w- I want to start with your your wrestling fandom because it was news to me that you knew about wrestling, and especially that you listened to FRL. What was your, what's your background in the sport? How did you become a, a fan of of wrestling? Um, I mean, I uh, just kind of am a big grappling fan. I mean, I wrestled in high school. Um, nothing crazy. I had, you know, decent uh, accomplishments, um, but wasn't like a, wasn't, you know, crazy competitive um, at like a national level, level or anything, but uh, just like, you know, um, always uh, kind of been like a martial arts guy. Um, and then, you know, started to uh, grapple in my teens. And um, to be honest, like, Initially, wrestling was like my least favorite. <laughs> uh, oh my yeah, I know. Right? Shocking. Um, but uh, yeah, probably the only high school kid that uh, didn't like wrestling initially. But uh, <laughs> no, but um, I just fell in love with it, uh, you know, over time. And, um, you know, like many kids, I had kind of a love hate with it. But uh, <laughs> um, it wasn't until like, you know, I started to get good um, that I really kind of like, you know, fell into the scene and was starting to like you know learn about guys uh like ben like yourself i would like go to camps and i would you know meet the you know higher level bigger name coaches and you know competitors and um and then i just kind of uh started to follow the sport a little closer um and uh, that's kind of what led me to you guys you know i was just looking up ways to to follow the sport and uh yeah and i just um have been like kind of a fanatical listener ever since um and uh, yeah, don't miss a show. <laughs> Dang man. Well, I uh, appreciate awesome. that, and that's that's really cool. Now, so a lot of people listening, some I, there's a growing knowledge of jujitsu in the scene as as you've seen it grow. I'm sure Keith during your time, but the wrestling fans they don't know exactly um, what ADCC is, what it what you accomplished to to qualify for ADCC. So for for a wrestling fan, describe ADCC. Why is it the 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 pinnacle of the sport? Um, so, I mean, ADCC is kind of like a, uh, like a hybrid, um, grappling tournament. So it's, it's, uh, it's like an acronym for the Abu Dhabi combat club because it was started by a a sheik in Abu Dhabi who had like kind of a concept or like an idea for a a concept for a a grappling tournament. Um, that would be, it was like very similar to, to how the UFC started. Like it would determine, you know, in theory, the best grappling style and like the best grappler, um at that time uh so like this is like the late 90s so you know shortly after the ufc started back then it was like more of a mixed bag it was like you would get you know high level wrestlers like mark curd um jeff monson you'd get mma fighters like your eye favor gsp um then you'd have your like traditional jiu-jitsu guys like your gi guys marcelo um hodger henzo a lot of the gracies um and uh and then basically they would just kind of uh meet in this like format that would give like equal opportunity to every grappling style. So there's like, allegedly, (laughs) yeah, sure. Uh, they, they tweaked the rules for a while at first. And, but now Mm. basically what it is, is, um, it's like a five minute submission only period, which is just all subs legal. Um, pretty much anything goes, but no points. Um, you know, including like, like, um, like guard pulling and stuff. There's no penalties for that. Right. And then the, the, um, second five minute period is, uh, it includes points, um, and there's no guard pulling, um, or at least you get negative, uh, you get penalties for, um, mm-hmm. guard pulling. And then, um, a, uh, like a five minute overtime, um, that is basically just like a wrestling match. So, um, it's, uh, it's a really like unique, um, format that just kind of like, it just, like, you know, all, it, 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 it comes close to giving like each grappling style um uh like opportunity to 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 do what they do you know the submission only guys um have their submission you know like the the period to just kind of like flow through things and then the um i guess the uh like you know maybe the more traditional points players have that the period to do their stuff as well and then the wrestlers have you know a chance to um you see a lot of wrestlers do really really well at adcc i mean um there's like like i said there's like former high level wrestlers like you know mark her um and then uh there's you know even like more current like j-rod nikki rod they're you know just like high school level but they're having like a lot of success because they can kind of translate that to i think before jujitsu really um 
I don't say blew up or expanded. Obviously, like Tito did really well. Rico Rodriguez oh, okay. did really well. Mark Kerr, a whole bunch of guys in the say 2000, 2000 2003, I think, like yeah, seven, 2002. 2007, maybe. But then oh, okay. YouTube kind of exploded, and now, like, even I think about myself, who is a high level, has a lot of jiu-jitsu experience. I guess the high level jiu-jitsu guys, dude. It's if you just got a wrestling background, it's like I don't want to say impossible, but damn near impossible because the leg lock game and everything that is so highly advanced um so i you know i thought about grappling a little bit after and it's like i just don't do it enough mm-hmm. anymore i'm in the wrestling i'm in the wrestling room six or seven days a week and um the thought of going as other high level guys while not really practicing that much is like well, that's really dumb I shouldn't do that so i'll yeah. uh yeah oh, sorry christian no go ahead. um i was just gonna say to brag on keith a little bit um so he's got a crazy story i i, I recommend you check it out there's there's some videos on flow grappling about it but to make it to ADCC is sort of it's kind of complicated and it's really difficult. You either have to get an invitation, you have to have like placed really high in in previous ADCCs, or you have to win trials. And if you're an American like Keith, you have to go to the either the East Coast and or the the West Coast trials. So Keith got second in three previous trials, losing to what? like I could give you I could give you the names. They may not mean much to you, but like Colabate. Uh, Ethan Crellinston, and I think Nikki Ryan, Gordon Ryan's brother. Is that right, Keith? Okay, so these yeah. are really, really good guys. So then Keith goes to the West Coast Trials, the biggest, toughest trials of all time, bar none. Like, this is the going to be the most rigorous path for Keith to ever qualify. And then Keith has some crazy development. Like, his flight got canceled. He had to drive and cut weight. As you can see, Keith's getting down to weight right now. He's looking kind of lean. That's good. But... <laughs> He has to do all that stuff. He stays up all night cutting weight, and then he wins. And you saw the final there. He beats Josh Cisneros, who, if you know that last name, yes, that is the brother of Alex Cisneros of, um, I think, Selma was where he where he oh, went to high yes. school. Um, so oh, close, that's who he uh, – he heel hooks him, and, and he qualifies. For him. And you see this – you know, and when you see Keith drop, it's just like, oh, my gosh. I did. What was that moment like when you finally were able to qualify for ADCC? Um, I mean, it meant a lot, man. I, I just had to conquer a lot of demons, like, um, you know, to, to accomplish that. I mean, it was like, um, the, like the travel situation, the weight cut, the, like, um, just in the back of your head, you know, you came, you, uh, know that you came so close, uh, like three, literally like three trials in a row. I was just like, I was there and I was like, and I felt like I was close. And then the next time I was like, all right, I'm not as close. And then like the next time I was like, oh, I was closer again. And so it was like kind of <laughs> just like a, uh, like a, just a pretty um, up and down, um, like, a, you know, path to get there. And then, I mean, to like win that term specifically, I had to beat kind of a lot of guys who would like um, beat me before or just, or just generally were very scary to me. Um, you know, I, I, I like, uh, competed against guys who I had never seen get submitted before. Um, you know, I'd seen or I competed against guys who like have kind of destroyed me in the training room, you know, um, guys who have, you know, beat me in competition, like I said. So, um, it was, uh, just, but like, I don't know. It was just one of those days where you just, nothing can stop you. You know, you're just in that flow state. And, um, it was like, uh, it's just, it's just been such a dream of mine forever that like I, and I knew it was the last chance. So I was like, I just, like um at least for this cycle it's every adcc is every two years so mm-hmm. there's two trials um uh, before every adcc so this is my last one so i was like i just gotta kind of full send it and um but it was cool man i don't i don't know why on earth i reacted the way i did but um it felt uh like it felt like a lot of hard work paying off and yeah it hopefully. was very it was a very pure reaction now uh, another <laughs> cool thing that jujitsu does is there's absolute brackets and so basically yeah. Imagine if like Spencer Lee and and Gable Steveson were all in the same bracket. Well, that happens in jujitsu. And Keith, he was in 2019 ADCC, and he he fights in the lightest weight class, 66 kilograms, and he did the absolute. And then he had the misfortune of having Bushesha in round one, who is like probably 265 what? pound monster. Ben, you probably know who Bushesha is. So that's who uh, Keith had uh, in, in the first round. But are, do you want to do the absolute again, Keith? Yeah, hundred percent. Um, oh I man, I mean, that's that's. I mean, that's as big of a goal for me as my own division. Um, 
I mean, no 66 guy has ever made it to the podium um, in the absolute. And, like, as guys get better, I think it's going to be, like, especially the big guys, it's going to be harder. Um, so I'm just constantly pushing to um, get on the, the absolute podium. And, and, man, that's definitely in my mind. You know, it's tough. I mean, that's, like, we saw what Lachlan did last time. He kind of, like, kind of, like, changed the landscape mm-hmm. of grappling with, with his absolute run. So I, I assume a lot of guys are going to try to, um do the absolute this last time there wasn't like a whole lot of people that wanted to do it it was kind of like yeah. um you know they were like looking for a guy they had to convince guys they even had to convince lachlan to do it um but this time i think it'll be a little bit different and i think it'll be pretty competitive to get in but but i, I really want to like i said it's as big a goal as as my own division heck yeah, heck yeah. well that's awesome well so it gets started on uh, you'll get your bracket uh your draw on that's on september 16th and then the competition is Saturday and Sunday of next week in Las Vegas. Uh, yeah, Keith and Keith and, is of the uh, Tenth Planet um, school, which right. if you don't know what that is, that's like if you know Joe Rogan. That's like he got his black belt from Eddie Bravo. Eddie Bravo gave his black belt to Keith's coach Richie Martinez, aka Boogeyman. So it's a uh, it's one of the the top top um, schools in in all of jujitsu. So w- which one do you go to, Keith? He's been uh, San Diego. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, and uh, and like you said, um, the tournament's going to be on the 17th and 18th. It's going to line up um, pretty well with World. So if you're watching this and you have a Flow Wrestling subscription. Boom. Um, watch and you, both. Yeah. And you plan on watching Worlds, then you can just flip over to Flow Grappling at the same time and, and check out ADCC. And, um, you know, um, man, I mean, I'm, you know, uh, I'm, I will – try as hard as i can to do well in this but like this is definitely the most competitive and, and stacked this tournament has ever been and and um i'm like pretty far from a, a like a favorite um but if you're if you don't know who i am like if you're just watching you're tuning in you're just meeting me i mean like feel free to tune in and i mean if, if there's going to be a, like a rocky story or something it, it, it would it would it would be for me so um you know tune in and, and we'll see what happens you know now he's underselling a little bit. It's he's every division is insane and his is insane, but he's got a lot of wins. He beat he beat Cisneros, he beat Damian Anderson, he's beaten Gabriel Souza, Gianni Grippo. So he's beaten a, a lot of really established guys. But um, the the ever humble Keith Krikorian. Uh, we'll definitely be rooting for you. I cannot wait to to watch you on there. Um, anything else before before we let you go, Keith? No. Um. Thank you guys for having me on. I appreciate all the uh the work that you guys put into this podcast like i said wrestling is um just like you know uh has definitely played a huge part of my life you know um just the lessons that it taught me and the work ethic that it instilled and um and the uh content you guys put out is great and i, I love following the sport so it's like really helpful to have a kind of a home base that you can return to often and uh and get your your wrestling news so um super super uh honored to be on and uh thank you guys for everything you do well appreciate that keith and as keith said um he did did better job marketing than than i did but yeah flow grappling subscription comes with your flow wrestling subscription so you can watch it all world championships who's number one adcc not a bad time to sign up if you haven't already um so keith i will see you in las vegas man uh oh you're gonna be there oh yeah oh yeah oh i didn't know that oh yeah i'm going Awesome. Um, yes, sir. Yeah, I'll see you there. Um, it'll be a. It's. It might not. I mean, and if anyone like watching is also considering, um, like maybe going to this, I would. I would pull the trigger and go because it might not ever be like this ever again. I mean, this is the first time it's ever been in like a, like a, nearly sold out arena. I mean, this mm-hmm. they've sold well over ten thousand tickets. Yeah. Um, it's the production value alone is they're putting into it is like pretty high quality and. Um, this is like the last edition that the uh, of, like event organizer Mojo Seam is is going to be running. So, in historically, like Ben, you did the ABCC and it was yeah. 20, 2009, right? In Barcelona. And it was, I'm sure there was people there, but it wasn't like crazy packed or anything. And the the it was very different back then. Um, hopefully, we don't return to like that time because we like to have the the fans involved and and like you know all the the kind of 
just you know media attention or whatever um but uh just there's a chance that it, we, we we you know might not get this go this big ever again so if you're thinking about going um i, I would yeah I would definitely pull, pull the trigger bruce buffer's gonna be there all day sunday doing the announcing i want to say he the, was there the production's when i was nuts. there well, i think he was time. yeah he used to do them uh pretty much pretty consistently so this could be wild a lot of pyro a lot of crazy production stuff so we're, we're looking yeah. forward to all of it Keith, thank you so much again. See you next week, and uh, stay safe the rest of your training. Sounds great. Thank you so much. Appreciate yep. you guys. See ya. Keep I'll Gregorian. <laughs> All right. Hey, you know what's fun, Christian? I, and I just didn't think about it until you said that, but uh, the, um, the absolute. They'd never do that in wrestling. How much fun would that be, though? What if we got to see Thomas Gilman versus Kwiatkowski? I mean, it's preposterous, right? That Gilman would win, but that's what they do. I know it's what they do. It's kind of what it's kind of one of jujitsu's like um, things, cool aspects. Like it's like a a, the addition of like heel hooks and like chokes makes it so much more entertaining versus just I take you down and control you. Yeah, because size makes. So much more of a difference in wrestling yeah, than it does in sure. jujitsu. Yeah, I, I wish there was a way to do an absolute. And there's, I think there's like weight ranges that make sense, but the, as far as I, there's just no scenario where you could take, yeah, you could take Spencer Lee and put him against just like maybe the 33rd guy to qualify for NCAAs. I don't, I don't think at heavyweight he, or what weight? At heavyweight, yeah. Oh no, of course oh, yeah, you would get crushed. There's no chance. So it's like you, it's just not one to one. Whereas, like, yeah, you know, Marcelo. But I also, what if you put okay? What if you put Spencer Lee versus the thirty third guy, one hundred fifty seven? Who are you taking there? One hundred fifty seven pounder. Really? really? Ooh, I don't know. Spencer might get him. <laughs> that's what I. I feel like it might four, be good. Fifty seven. So that's yeah, yeah. That's a lot of weight. 30 pounds. 35, 35, 40 pounds, 30 mm-hmm. pounds from in there. Yeah. And and Spencer's not a big 25 and, you know, 57. All yeah. right. 33rd person at 149. Hmm. I think I'm taking Spencer at that I'm point. Taking, yeah, I'm, I'm taking Spencer. I'm taking Spencer. I'm taking Spencer, yes. Uh, Man, I was whooping, dude. I mean, I, no offense to my brother. I was whooping him when he was number one at 97 and I was number one at 174 my senior yeah. year. So, um, like it's, uh, I mean, obviously, the bigger you get, the less it matters. Um, it, uh, your style matters a, bu- a bunch too. Well, you, like... your ability to adapt your style. Like, cause I wrestle with Mark and Dom also, and I'm not gonna wrestle the same style that I wrestle Mark and Dom that I'm wrestling. I wrestle Mike Chandler, Nick Maribel, and Matt Pell. They're 57, mm-hmm. 65s, obviously, right? So, um, yeah, I th- I think some of those like 65, 74s, if they really know what they're doing and they're really good. They could go with some of those average heavyweights. Yeah, yeah. Um, it it would be kind of interesting just to see like how how it would go, but yeah, it would be uh, it'd be tough. I wish wrestling could have something like that. It'll it would be, be so like, much fun though, because then you could do so many more matchups. Because think about like you know in the attempts that Flo has made at like pro leagues or independent cards, yeah. people are so whiny about wrestling people that are like really specifically oh in their weight class are really close they're they're freaking babies about the, it the weight class you know? negotiations were definitely the funniest uh oh, it was the most awful. frustrating aspect of, of so annoying we and that was like when that. when uh i was gonna wrestle dake and that fell out because he didn't want to wrestle and it was like i'm like listen i, I want to do the match i'll re- pick anybody <laughs> yeah and pick Quentin Wright, and they're like 195 pounds. I'm like, I weigh like 186, but okay, whatever. I said, I said I'd do anybody. I'm not going to be a baby. I'll do anybody, you know? So I wish wrestlers would be a little bit more like that. Yeah, me too. Um, yeah. I think it's going fun. less. I think it's getting further and further away from that, actually. Really? You think? I mean, Burroughs <laughs> yeah. just did Burroughs just did Taylor last year or two years ago or whatever that was. That was, yeah, 21. Um, yeah, that happened. I mean, that, that that's. Time. That was two at the time. It was two weight classes above. Now it's only one weight class above, right? Because he's seventy nine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Um. Okay. Speaking of weight, and to bring it back to number one, how do you feel about day before weigh-ins? Is that what we're doing? For who's you weigh-in Thursday? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I'm fine with it because I think I think the thing is all these guys. It's not like any of them got to choose. 
oh, it's day before I can go down to an extra weight class. Like they're probably all wrestling the weight class they would wrestle at say Super yeah. Thirty Two or these other tournaments. Um, so I, I think it, if you Super were said day before, day before weigh-ins. what's up? Well, Super Thirty Two is also day before. Yes. Yeah, but I think so. I mean, and who knows? Maybe some of these guys go down from here, but I probably doubt it. Like when I look at the weight classes, like that, I think this is where they'll all be at all the tournaments moving forward. Um, the other, the obvious is uh, Castillo is not going to probably um, be at one thirteen. He is probably at one hundred six. I would guess. M- maybe Depends. bumps up a little bit. I don't know. Depends largely on mullet length. Honestly, <laughs> I mean, statistically uh, speaking, some of these guys are going to move up. Yeah. Well, like for some of their high school teams and high school seniors, yeah, it doesn't make yeah. sense for them to hold 13 right. or 20 or whatever the weight yeah. low is. Um, the, but the like skill level is a little bit lower. So some of them wrestle in states with literally different weight classes. That too. Well, so. That is the dumbest thing. The the weight classes are different in like all these different states. Yeah. Why are they do, Why are they it, doing that, Christian? Tell me. Tell me the answer to that. Uh, well, I have no idea. Everyone like, just started like making Michigan. Up the, they just didn't change. They never changed. What a decade ago. Never. Bunch of beasts. I kind of love it. <laughs> yeah, no, like I respect that. <laughs> like they're the only one. That's so, it says like uh, something. I think there are a couple like, other. There's one or two like, others. Yeah, now it's well. all over. Well, now, like now it's got different I'm weight classes. Then. No, I think one or two others never switched then as uh, well. Maybe New York would be the no only one, other one that I can think of off Yeah. Hand. It's possible no one even told Alaska about the change. Right. So they may have been unaware. Oh my god. I don't know about Ohio. Pennsylvania made the switch. Um I think because of data that shows there's sub- didn't they move down to thirteen? Uh yeah, I think so. They moved down to thirteen to try and have less gaps in smaller mm-hmm. schools. Yes. Uh lineups. And so then they you have to obviously proportion it differently. I may be incorrect in saying that but i think that was the thought process behind it yeah yeah that, that they said there's if because where they did was the upper weights and they said all right yeah. well you can that is pull they really i mean it doesn't matter as much i i know our academy gets the more serious wrestlers but i know we could so we're our, our awa duels coming up live on flow we did. We took out an upper weight because that was what a lot of people are missing, and it is early in the season. So we said, "What you know?" Last year we said, "What's the perfect amount of weight classes, and where would you like to pull it out?" We kind of did a survey of the teams afterwards, and that was where. So we're actually going 75, 95 heavyweight um, is our kind of weights, and then um, we so we actually sorry, so we go 52, 59, 66, 75 heavyweight, uh, 95 heavyweight, heavyweight. Um, but like in the middles, we have so many freaking dudes. I know one year we did. With the year there was no competition, so what twenty twenty, mm-hmm. we had to do wrestle offs because usually we just do like a point system based on how they do in summer tournaments and whatnot. We had sixteen man brackets at freaking like thirty two through fifty two, and then you know two twenty we have two people, right? And yeah. uh, heavyweight we have two or three. Ninety five we have two or three. Like it just there's just not a lot of guys that are that big who. And I think part of it is they don't wrestle in the offseason because if you're that big and you're athletic, you probably have success at a lot of other things as well. But just then generally in season, there, there are a lot of forfeits of those weights. So I actually wouldn't be opposed to putting one of those weights back in the middle somewhere um, and yeah. staying at 14. That's Yeah, that's what I, I agree with that. When they added like the 82, 95, I was like, what is this? Uh, okay. Steven Davis says Michigan has just changed for this year. Oh, my so gosh. Really? They finally the what? I don't. I'm, I can tell you. All right. But yeah, according to cool. Stephen, Stephen Davis, they're changing after holding the ground for so long. Hey, um, allegedly this is the last day of Facebook jail for Keith Gothard. So, uh, but I'm worried. We had to replace him with a, a different Keith. I think we today. up Keith Gothard. I think we upgraded. When you qualify for ADCC. And listen to every episode. He, he's in the YouTube chat asking about what the roofer situation is like at ADCC. No roofers. <laughs> no roofers. Um, it's uh, it's not easy to get in. Um, the the worst or the the there are some. So the it's a worldwide competition. So some of the trials are like you know like there's Oceania and Asia. So they're, they're, those are not as competitive as like U.S. Brazil trials, which are like stack so you get some guys that aren't quite but they're everyone is is super high level that's the deal i choked out some jabroni who was the european champion there it is 
I mean, and sure then Pablo Pop- Popovich got oh, a hold of a bitch. He, he knew my weakness. Went well, right it was it was funny because I, you know, I'm I, I oversee the grappling team too, and in the in our little marketing meeting, they go over like, hey, well, these are the videos we're gonna be posting on YouTube this week, and it's all these different, you know, it's always like this vlog or this breakdown, and one of them was was Ben Askren versus Pablo Popovich. I was like, what the heck, guys? I was like, is this really necessary? Well, they did post me. They did post me choking that dude out. I don't remember the guy's name, um, but yeah, I can't yeah. remember. He's a European guy. Choked him out first round. Oh yeah. But I ultimately gave them the thumbs up to upload that video. You know who actually too. did really well there? That was a wrestler that year. Um, and it was Chris Weidman. I want to say he took like a thir- yeah. third or fourth or something. He, I know they don't he fought Galvao, back, I, think, I think. I think that's right. So I think he lost in the semis. And I think they do a third place match. I believe something mm-hmm. like that they do like if you make i think if you make the semis and lose yeah that's who fights for for third third yeah Mm -hmm. um which honestly does yeah that makes the most sense if you're not going to have full wrestlebacks it's better than repechage Um, repechage um yeah with the with the adcc i mean i i know initially comparative to other rule sets it did give wrestlers an advantage and there's a bunch of those guys who had early success like in the early 2000s um because they could score points on takedowns and there was no guard pulling mm-hmm. and, and that type of thing but now dude each you do do they're that legit they're just so good at what they do um it is uh, it's almost impossible for someone who doesn't have a high level of skill in jiu-jitsu to go do well or have a chance to do well yeah um so yeah, looking forward to who's number one tomorrow, ADCC Worlds starting next mm-hmm. week. But Saturday, uh, big UFC fight. I don't know if you're if you're gonna be watching, but Ch- Chimaya versus uh, Nate Diaz. That's happening. Be curious. Are you gonna stay up late enough to watch this? There's no way you stay up this late. Chris. Saturday night, I might. I don't know. There was one a couple weeks ago. You stayed up late enough to you texted me or something. I'm like, "Whoa, what's Christian still doing awake?" I was at I was at at, uh, at Sears house watching um, hey, with, with the boys. So yeah, I don't know. Saturday, I I think I want to watch Jamayev Diaz. I think I want to watch. I think it's it. going to be a bloodbath. He's but, going to uh, kill him, right? It'll be but a the thing is, until the fourth round, and then Diaz will get one slap on him, and everybody will go crazy. And then he'll <laughs> then he'll proceed to just point at him instead of beating him up and lose the fight like he did with Leon Edwards, <laughs> which I was like, this has got to be the, the, the biggest more like that's not People cool, man. They love it though. They love it. He'll get his ass beat, and then he'll say, "Is that all you got?" He'll point at him. He'll say two oh nine, and they'll be like, "Diaz yeah, is such a savage." And you're like, "Wait." Wait, he just got beat up no, for like he's just, the whole time. He's just, he's just tactically terrible. It's not a savage. It's just stupid. It makes no sense to start. No, I'm saying the, what the what the, there's there's this whole Nate and Nate Diaz fan base who yeah Nate you're 100 percent right. He gets beat up and then he like starts taunting them and pointing at them and saying 209, what's up? And I then saw... and then like they think he's the man. It's really weird. I I don't understand it. I don't there's, understand there's it. There's a funny uh, uh tweet <laughs> I saw the other day. Where it's the Simpsons episode where Homer gets to play uh, NFL football <laughs> and he scores a touchdown and then he starts like celebrating and then everybody's just like whatever because then they pan up to the scoreboard and it's like fifty-seven to seven or whatever it is. Nate Diaz, literally. Yeah, Chimaev's just gonna kill him, um, probably. But but thing is, Diaz is hard to kill. I'll give him that. You can't. He's he, is, t- he is very hard to kill. He's been killed twice. Josh Thompson hit him with a head kick. And what's the other one? Like you can't punch him in the face and knock him out. Seemingly, he can. He can endure a lot of facial damage. Very, very durable. Yes. Very, Although he does cut easy. Very easy. I'm blaming the other one. I'm gonna look it up. Nate Diaz. Fight. Do you cut easily, Ben? Uh, a little bit on my. A little bit right here on my eyes because I, I. You know, I actually got cut a whole bunch of times wrestling. Um, and then that, that once you get some scar tissue, then it kind of cuts out, cuts up pretty easy. Yeah. Um, what'd you think about, uh, Nate Diaz calling out in Ghana? Should they have done that fight? <laughs> I don't know. That's the absolute uh, division for UFC. There you go. Sometimes it's kind of hilarious. I, I, yeah. Uh, I don't you know. Smash everybody. Smash. Uh, okay. Then I can't find his other, I, he must, oh, he got armed by Hermes Franca. That was in 2006, though. That doesn't. 2006. That. Yeah, that, we're not going to count that. That's too old. Yeah, it doesn't count. Um, okay. 
Let's look here. Anything else? Um, questions. What, questions. Questions. Questions in here. Question. Brecky, Brecky did ask me to come down, but I already had something going on the weekend that they wanted me to come. So you big time Bracky, your former co-host? No, I wanted to go. I just couldn't. No, there's no big timing. I said, oh, man, that would be a lot of fun. It was a, I think it was a coach's clinic or something to that effect. And I thought, oh, this would be a lot of fun. Um, and then, yeah, then I couldn't go. All right. It kind of sounds like you didn't want to. Um, favorite city. Oh, it would have been cool to ask Keith this question. But uh, favorite cities in the U.S. and international you've been to for wrestling? Because jiu jujitsu guys get to travel all kinds of cool places. Um, what were your places domestically and international that you went, uh, Ben? Me, uh, international would probably be Singapore. I went there a lot of times. It kind of felt like a second home. I mean, I probably went there 12 or 13 times. Um, and it's a freaking fantastic city. They don't have lots of freedoms, which would be the one negative if I was actually <laughs> a citizen there. They're a little draconian in their laws. But you know what? The weird they part is people have a lot of freedoms. People seem to be really happy. It's weird. So um, I do love Singapore a lot. Uh, and domestically, I don't know. I, I guess Vegas is kind of, I've probably been there, I don't know, 40 or 50 times between mm. wrestling and MMA. Um, and it's always just like, I have a lot of fun there. I never want to stay for very long, but you know, a good like two to four day stint there is is nice. And then I really got to like New York City, but I haven't been there since after Corona. I heard it's a dump now. No, no, it was, we went. It's fine. We went for Final X. It was awesome. It was like okay, Not super normal. Um, I know I know that there's some of that going on. It sounds like a lot of crime, but what I saw in Manhattan where we went, we walked for. I don't know, did, were you with us that day? We walked for freaking. Miles and miles and miles. Uh, it, it was awesome. So those would um, be mine. I mean, um, man, I, I've traveled a lot. I did all 50 states before age of 30. Um, but as far as wrestling and jiu-jitsu and MMA, those would probably be the ones. Um, JD's uh, quickly accumulated a number of international trips during his uh, couple years here at two, Flow. Three, oh, really? Three. You went to, went to Acapulco, as you call it. You went to Bulgaria, and you went somewhere last year for U23s. Okay. Where seniors are this oh, year. Oh, okay. All right. Well, stack rank uh, those. Ooh. Um, I actually did really like Belgrade. That might be number one. Acapulco was cool. <laughs> if you like the beach. And Sophia, Sophia's getting there. It's it's okay. <laughs> it's on the come up, says well, JD. <laughs> what's cool about Sophia is, uh, well, like, you can tell, like, more money is coming into it, but it's still... Got Eastern little. Europe, it's got a little, you know, a lot, a lot of rundown buildings and whatnot. But you can tell, like, there are parts that are money is being invested and it's coming up. Um, but what's cool about Sofia is you can drive 20 minutes and you're in the mountains. That's nice. A lot like a Denver situation. Very yes. Cool. So that that is pretty cool. So uh, international Oslo, obviously, that's been a running bit. Coolest place I've been. Um, and I love to rub it in because it bothers JD. So I'm going to keep on. Well, you guys uh, just talk about it all the time. I know. Um, the internet, uh, domestically, I love New York City. Like Ben, I cannot stand Las Vegas. Um, and I'm going there. Really? Next what week. about it? I don't. It's too much. I hate the cigarette smoke. Too I feel, much sinning. <laughs> I feel like it's not too that. Too much I sinning. I don't mind the 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 sketchiness, I guess. It doesn't really bother me. Yeah, but if you don't like really gamble or really... I like poker. I, I like I like some of this. I love sports book making some making a couple waiters on the old ball team, but it's just not. I don't like. I feel like I'm always inside the entire time. I never see the sun. Um, it's hard to so get I a meal. Try to get, well, hard to get. That has nothing to do with there, Vegas. Like, that's you and Vegas. no, no, no. It's 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 designed that way. You're, it's, the city is designed to keep it's you indoors. Crap you. Um, and also, it's I, I find it hard to get a quick bite and it. When you're working, really? like that's what you need. I feel like there's yes. so many good re little good restaurants. There's good restaurants. Going. That doesn't mean it's easy to just like, oh, I just need a like a quick Chipotle uh, or Chick-fil-A. It's not that got it. not that easy. Yeah, um, it's fairly easy. If you like actually leave the South Point. <laughs> <you're basically, laughs> that's, that's why you just been in the South Point too many times. That's yes. why you're upset. <laughs> no, I've I've been I've been to many places. You can also get Chipotle door dashed. Okay. All right, listen, this guy's got all the answers. It's not that easy. Um, so yeah, oh, I don't, man. I don't like Vegas that much. Listen, I don't have to like, you can like it all you want. Why don't you move I, there? Why don't you live there? You I'm could be the pit. Fan of Vegas I could either. see you as a pit boss, JD. <laughs> pit boss, JD. With some boots and a bolo tie. I could see you 
kicking some of the rip rack. You could be a cooler. Honestly. Oh, JD does kind of look like a cooler. Dude. He's like, I thought bit. you'd be bigger. <laughs> yeah. Um, Call me Swayze. Cool. I'm really, you know what I am really excited for, though, Christian? I'm really, really excited. And this is a city that I don't know if I love it. It's a city I love it because I live close to it, but Kansas City hosting NCAAs in 2024. Mm-hmm. And it's a really cool down, downtown area where it's kind of happening where I think all of the hotels, and restaurants should it's be power within and light walking district, distance. right? Power and light. It's a lot of fun. Not like Detroit, where it was like ghost town down there. Um, St. Louis is kind of a ghost town now. Uh, but Kansas City should be uh, really happening with the Sprint Center downtown. A lot of things to go to, a lot of hotels. Bruce Tuss awesome. has legal sports been in, in Kansas City now, too. Yes. Really? Yes. Yes. Um, Travis, okay. our uh, guy on our. Uh, partner or global partnerships team was telling me about uh about that he went he went back there he's from kansas city area he went back there for his fantasy football draft so that's cool um i'm trying to think of like my favorite college campuses um that i've been to one a really nice one is north carolina that one's like insane Um, i like nc state nc state's cool because i really like i like raleigh a lot virginia tech's obviously great um Cornell in the uh, summer Man. is like ridiculous. You got to go there. You would love it. And okay. honestly, Madison we went there in June. That was awesome. Yeah, like perfect awesome. weather. I don't like Madison though. This city, it just it's on an if myth. And that's got issues. What's wrong it's like with the hard if-myth? to get anywhere because it's two lakes and then there's this little strip of land, so it makes it like so annoying to try to get around and it's difficult. Super well, annoying. The- Ah, I didn't have that difficulty. Maybe you still know the area like me. You're not a ge- geographer. You just don't know what you're, you're dealing with there. Yeah. Okay. Now the question is, and Jason Hildreth brings up Tulsa. What is That's, in your this... left hand? I've been trying to figure this out. Oh, what it's just that? my AirPods. I'm charging them for the flight. You know, very unprofessional. Oh, got it. Let me get okay. that out of the shot. <laughs> no, Sorry. I've been like trying to figure out what the hell you've been doing. I don't know if it's like a button where you're going to buzz me or I don't know yes. what it was. Yes. Fidget spinner. What if I, wrong answer? Yeah. What if what if we had uh, like a taser uh, attached to? I had that button and it was attached to your ear, and I could just tase you remotely. Ah. That would be awesome. I mean, we might, oh, might need the... some cooperation from from Amy on that one, but I think we could do it. Uh, she would probably love setting you up. Yeah, okay. probably. Um, who's the best arm wrestler between JD, CP, Ben, and Shane? Well, if it's not Ben, that's oh, these guys pathetic. are all little guys. I beat them for sure. Yeah. I'm not making Dalton on you. Yeah. Don't underestimate him. Um, Mike Monroe says, I think Mizzou finishes top four this year. What do you think? Mizzou finishes top four. Um, I mean, I think they're going to have a good team. Uh, I think Rocky Elam's going to score good points. I think Keegan O'Toole, Mahler is obviously really good. Mm -hmm. Zach Elam's going to have a tough time because heavyweight's so good. Um, I am thinking King O'Toole can take another step up. He was around 12 last year. Uh, Alan Hart was done around 12 two years in a row now. No, certainly was around 12. So, yeah, I think they're, they got a lot of guys who are going to be in the mix. I mean, they're going to have to put together NCAs, but they could potentially do well. Yeah. Um, it They need another big, big point scorer. Like, they need someone like Mahler in the finals. They need. I think Rocky Elam could be the guy that takes that step up. I know last year he was dealing with some injury things. Mm hmm. Um, and he still took, we took fourth last year, correct? He plays pretty high. He did good. Fourth, I think. So I think fifth and fourth. Um, so I think he's a guy like, I think he could potentially beat Jacob Warner. Or, you know, he, he's been beating Buchanan a couple of times and lost. So yeah, I think he's right there with the best guys. Him and Younger. Um, their battles. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, exactly. But then Mizzou, the other thing about Mizzou is that I don't believe, or maybe they graduate one person. Before 2024, but I think I think maybe Alan Hart is the only one who's going to grant. Let me see. Alan Hart is a senior, uh, but then I think Josh Edmond is going to go down to 141, which is a more natural weight. So um, 2024 should be a really good look for Mizzou. Yeah, so I, I think top four will be tough. I think they're going to be top to bottom, kind of like always is the case for Missouri. Very very good dual team. They're going to win a lot of duels by lopsided margins, and then. Yeah, they'll do good at Big Twelves. Um, probably, probably the my pick to win Big Twelves. Um, and then yeah, and then we'll see beyond that. Um, th- they'll need some of those guys to to place pretty high. 
They can't have a lot of round of 12s, even though, you know, it's a really, really, that's really deep in the tournament, but doesn't score a lot of points as Ben will probably lament yes. next March when Missouri's outside the top four and they have some guys in the round of 12. But we'll see. They're definitely going to be good. They're going to be a very good team. And, like, you know, if Keegan's, like, a 25 to 27-point scorer at NCAAs, which is, yeah, I think, realistic, except for the weight's deep, and is he really going to be pinning guys in the quarters and semis? I don't know. Um, cause he could have, possible. He could literally have, like, Shane Griffith in the semis or David Carr yeah. or Quincy Monday. But you never know. Um, he's getting a lot better. So, yeah. yeah, looking forward to that. Looking forward to NCAAs in Tulsa. I like Tulsa. Um I do not underestimate um, how much Missouri is gearing up for 2024, Austin. I'm, I'm, I'm prepared for it. I'm aware. It's going to be fun. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine Ben that year? Oh, my gosh. Let's go. Insufferable. It'll be good, though. Uh, okay, look. I need to pull up the doc for other questions. Who's we'll the – uh, we've done all the tiers. Who's your pick from a, a second-tier guy that could win it all? I know what my second-tier guy is. Rocky, we can, I guess your, can I guess your second Rocky, tier pick? Rocky Elam? I was oh. going to say Parker Kekaisen. Yes. Let's go! <laughs> hey. Oh, never mind. I mean, we, <laughs> we made also Trent Hydley, who has given Brooks, Brooks fits, has been able to do it yet. Some would say he maybe should have uh, in the NCAA final, but. Who's the best shot to, to upset Yanni? Ridge. 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 He came close last year, OT, before Yanni right. did the somersault rule thing. I know, but it kind of feels like that was just his shot. I think that was his shot. I feel like go. I feel like it's Gomez because he's, he's got to pin him. Yeah, there, yeah. You need someone that can just bomb him. And Gomez, he did it to RBY that one time. He, <laughs> I would say here. maybe 57 because that one's so wide open where I don't even feel – I don't know who we put. I, I have in to go the, back and look at who we put in – Tier Tears. one, but I like tier one's like, I feel like there's a lot of people that could win. You know, Bra Brayton Lee, Will Lawan, Peyton Rob, Teamer. I mean, like, these are where yeah, I feel like someone could sure. come nowhere and beat some of these dudes. Yeah, I think you've got to find a weight that doesn't have like a real decided favorite. Um, we might have put all those guys in tier one. <laughs> this, I like, um, honestly, someone said Carson Karchla. Um, he's going to be right mm. there in those matches. If he wasn't That's in such a crazy weight, but. Uh, I think him for sure. No one at 33 because we know it's the two. Um, 41. Yeah. 41. I would say I'm 90, sure well, 97. Rocky Elam. Let's go. Yeah. True. 41's a disaster too. People could come out of nowhere a, for that one. Yes. That that one has crazy potential. I mean, what's Andrew I'm surprised you're not picking Bo Bartlett. Bo, I, dude, say he can't. We still got a lot. I, of, so I'm wondering why you're not picking him. I'm, I'm, I'm slow playing it this year. Okay. Um, no, he's going to do good. Um, anywhere else? That's a good question. I like that question. So those are some of the guys I have. Um, all right, here's a question from Greg. Heading into the World Championships, what is JB's legacy if he wins again but only finishes with one Olympic gold medal? If DT was to win another gold in Paris, would he eclipse JB's legacy? Oh. What can JB do in the World Championships to cement his legacy of the USA GOAT? And I mean, I, yeah. I just think everything is very much up for grabs and movement. And so much. Th there's going to be a lot of change in the pecking order. It's kind of like you got to let it play out. I mean, if David runs yeah. 20. What if, yeah, go ahead. What if? What if JB wins two more? but doesn't make the Olympic team again uh, at 74. That one's hard because then you have a guy who made the first two. I mean, he, so he won his Olympic title in 2012, uh, did not place in 16, didn't make the team in 20, essentially 2020 and 2024, but has the most world titles ever. I mean, I think that probably makes him the GOAT. But then, you know, when you're talking about the GOAT argument, mm -hmm. people would have a lot of ammo again to make the argument against him because he missed two Olympic teams. And if we take 79 out, which, which 79 was out for how many years? What, uh, I don't know, but 17 years? Mm -hmm. There wasn't like a, there wasn't right. an in-between there? Yes. Something like maybe 20 years, something like Long that? Time. I mean, you take that out and you take a whole bunch of medals and world titles away from them. So 
Um, and this is essentially the argument when I did the when me and Tommy did the best wrestlers. Like, uh, if there was a weight class, if there was a seventy nine, is you know at that point it was Dake because he was behind Burroughs. Dake would have a whole bunch of world titles and world medals. And now it's Burroughs who actually does because they have the weight class. He's getting more world titles and more world medals because of that. Mm-hmm. Which I think is I think it's the way it should be. The but but Dake also was a beneficiary process. of the new weights too. Correct. Yep. Yep. Agreed. Yep. Because he won two there. Yes. You could also say, and this is not just counting medals, like the better wrestler, you could say they hadn't reached his prime yet. When he did reach his prime, he kept Burroughs off of teams. Burroughs kept Dake off teams in the early time, and then Dake reached his peak, and he was able to keep Jordan off of two Olympic teams. Well, Jordan only kept him off of one so far, but. Technically, um, yeah. he went up in yeah, 2016. Yeah, that's why it's kind of hard of to just, like, you know, you, so many things moving forward that are going to happen. Yeah, it. that's the thing. It's not like the, it's Jordan and then we're just wondering what happens when he retires because you've got all these guys in the – not even waiting yeah. in the wings. They're currently winning right now. Like, Dake, Dake could Snyder, go – Snyder, Taylor, Dake, yes. Those, those three could amass a ton of stuff between now. I mean, David Taylor could very reasonably run – through 24 you know he could win 22 23 24 and then what are we saying two-time olympic champ um and you know and does he does he move on does he does he retire like i don't think it's a foregone conclusion that these guys are done in paris um Uh, i definitely don't think it's a foregone conclusion with kyle snyder who has already amassed oh my gosh three titles uh plus four other medals and he should win this year you know should have his fourth in another olympics and like who knows and if 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 he is not in arguably goat of goats weight class yeah he is thought of in a completely different conversation yeah he's already a two-time olympic champion Mm -hmm. uh five-time olympic champion literal goat of goats in his weight and the the thing is you can't sajaliyev i I don't see him going beyond 24 guys in this argument is how many more times are Russia going to be out because they're out this year and people are going to use that. And then what if they're out next year too? I know. What if they're on the Olympics? Very likely, or I'm not going to say likely, but it is maybe more likely. Definite than possibility. Like. Definite possibility. Yes. yes. Then that makes that weird too. So yeah, there's so many moving parts. Yeah. Um, I, I, um, yeah. Um, what, the longevity some of these guys are going to have makes makes really framing you just need to compare jordan with people who have already retired because comparing him actively right now with these guys that are still active is is kind of tough um yeah so let's just skip that for a few more years well it's fun to it's fun to kind of uh it's fun fun, we're very lucky that we can talk about something like this where we have four guys who are on this sort of and really, no one's even talking about Jaden Cox. But if Jayden. this was seven years ago, people would be talking about Jaden Cox because he has two titles and three other medals now. Yeah, so he was Five bronze and bronze in sixteen and seventeen, and then world champ eighteen, nineteen, nineteen, and then twenty one. He uh, got he bronze. The team. Well, he made the uh, world team. So the, yeah, yeah, the other twenty one. Yeah, um, the Olympic team though. No, so five medals, that. two titles. I mean. Right, so if he gets three more medals going through twenty twenty four, that's eight. And now we've got Gilman has three medals, including a world Gilman. title. Like he's not that wow. far behind Jaden with yeah. from a credential standpoint. So yeah, it's mm-hmm. a it's a pretty insane um, roster that the Team USA has. Yeah, yeah. When it's but but Kyle's the one who who has these audacious aspirations of wrestling till he's like, and he's still so young, and he wants to do several yeah. more quads. Um, Heavyweights age well, generally, right? We've seen that in in wrestling for for a long time now, and and if he can keep Jaden off of the twenty twenty four team, oh my gosh, it's another yeah. notch in his belt. That is a notch, or vice versa. Yes, yeah. yes, great point. It'll be fun fun to talk about. Um, yeah, fun times in wrestling. I'm trying to see if there's any other. Um. Any other questions before we go? Next week will be a little crazy because I'm no, traveling. Hey, these, what about this uh, professor and the kid wrestling? They actually kind of both got some skills. Like, they're not yeah. bums. They had good stances. They got some moves. Let's, a little let's, bit. I don't know if we can play it, but let's play it. Um, I don't know who this dude is, but 
You know, it looks like they don't. It's funny how his arms are coming in so tight, though, every time he gets up. It makes me laugh. Yeah, I think the shirt is restricting him, you know. You think that's what it is? He's got suspenders on. He does have suspenders on. I got wrestling suspenders on. Solid shot, but man, down blocking. This is uh, a. See how he's so tight with his arms? Yeah. Oh, he's in. No, but. Oh, oh my gosh, they're going through the projector. He scrambles out of it. Watch it. Watch it. The dude scrambles out of oh, it. Oh, he passes the leg. Yeah, he's not used to that boom, newfangled scrambling. Like, he's, dude, they're not bums. They kind of know what they're doing a little bit. Yeah. Man, no one's going to want to give up the takedown there. <laughs> I don't know if anyone does. I didn't, I didn't make it this far. I think somebody mm, said. I didn't think it was going to last this long. He got his degree at Cornell. I, th- I thought one of the Cornell wrestlers said that they knew him. Dang. Explains well, the suspenders. I, <laughs> so much Could fun. be wrong. Andy Bernard loves suspenders, I'm pretty sure, too. Wow. <laughs> Some beasts. Uh, that's a, that, you know, that's a fun teacher. That's a fun teacher, for sure. Also, before we go, uh, I would like to say, when we did 157 tiers, we put O'Connor, Teamer, Luan, Rob, Indonian, and Brayton Lee on tier one. Whoa. Okay. Oh, that's <laughs> a big tier one. That's we a large smart. tier one. So... Dang. Ed Scott uh, would have to win. <laughs> Dude, I, that's not crazy. I don't think Ed Scott winning is that crazy. That's really not. Really isn't. Um, I mean, you look at the adjustments. I mean, he beat Quincy Monday last year. Yeah. Um, he he's he is right there. I know he had he took he had some losses and Cincy's wasn't great, but man, I mean, he was a. I don't know if he was he a true sophomore last year. Yeah, because he yeah. wrestled. It, he yeah. wrestled as a true freshman free year. We probably yeah. would have normally and then he redshirted. Moved up. moved up away was great all year yeah. long. With that, with that room, yeah, can't count him out yeah. at all. Um, oh, I was gonna do one other thing. What uh, were you gonna now, do? Now I can't remember. Uh, oh, I know. Which this is a question from your friend Christian Piles. Which weight is more wide open, one forty one or one fifty seven? 41 i think because i mean that that's a really good tier one and but and i don't i couldn't see okay so if i'm at um 41 cole matthews is number one I mean, you could argue real woods or bergman i could see those dudes losing to someone kind of way down the list um at 57 if i go down the same amount like i have a really hard time seeing uh a jacob wright or johnny lovett beating those dudes Johnny Lovett. I guess Brayton Lee did lose to Garrett Model last year, so maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. That didn't count. Something was wrong with him. Think so? It counts, but it, it yeah, he it looked counts. It was it counts. bizarre. Okay. Well, right. We're gonna get that guy. I got a plane to catch. Who's me and number Ollie. one? Let's go, baby. Who's number one? Tomorrow, the ladies get it started. Four Eastern, then seven Eastern. The boys get it going. I can't wait. Me and Bader on the call. Happy birthday, David Bray. I'm going to go see him soon. He's already Worlds. there. Very next day. World's the next day. It's all happening. Wrestling is so back. What, what is this music? What is this? I'm out of here. Dude, I can't deal with this crap. I'm out of here. I kind of love it. Is, is the kids say, is, is this a bop, JD? This is a bop. A certified bop to bring in the weekend. You got to go out with a bop. Thank you to Ta- Tyler. Keep this one in the rotation. I think this is the Thursday Send it over the weekend. Bye. This is the move. All right. Thank you, everyone. I'll see you in Michigan if you're going to be there. Goodbye. Peace.